Hi everybody, my name is Ed Morris and I'm Technical Manager for Our Technique. Now this is part two of our video where we're talking about pressure reducing valves and the different ways we use pressure reducing valves within a system. We focused on the first video where we were talking about um, first stage pressure reduction, so we're taking high pressures down to low pressures. Now what we want to focus on this video is high and low demand. Now one of the things that not a lot of people understand is that pressure reducing valves should actually be sized on their flow rate or the determined flow rate to go through the valve um, because that's each valve has a different way it performs, different sizes have got different minimum and maximum flow rates. So we have to make sure that the valve is sized correctly. Um, so we have sizing tools that can help you do that. Um, but it does create other issues further down the line. So for instance, if we take a pressure reducing valve uh, and we set that for a specific flow rate. Now that could be at peak demand in a building. So if we've got a multiple occupancy building uh, where we're using high amounts of water in the day, we'd size it to that flow rate. But what that does then do is create us a problem further down the line. If someone's to open an outlet, say for instance, in the middle of the night, this valve becomes undersized. So we need to make sure that we can, we can cope with that within the system. So the way that we do that is we fit what we call a bypass PRV. Now what the bypass PRV is, it's a lot smaller in, in, in body size, which means it's got a lot lower flow rates and some smaller operating parameters that we used to. So then what we do is we put them in parallel. So the valve then will start to work as a, as a, by, as a bypass PRV, as opposed to trying to lo pull slow or low flow rates through the valve itself. Now I'll try to draw that out for you so you can see that as a diagram. So we're just going to draw a quick diagram now to explain what we mean when we talk about high and low demand PRVs. So what we have here is our incoming water supply and that goes off to the building. Now that high demand PRV will be, will be sized on a, on a flow rate which is determined by the amount of outlets that are open. Now when the building is at full occupancy and all those outlets are open, the valve will operate fine, no noises, no issues. However, as the demand drops on the building or demand drops on the system, we then start to take that valve outside of its operating parameters. So it's minimum flow rate required to work. will start to drop and will start to fall outside that window. Now what that can do is start to generate some kind of noise with the valve, which will reverberate through the pipes um, and we can start to have a noisy system. So the way we overcome that is to install what we call a bypass PRV or a low demand PRV. And we simply pipe this valve as a bypass so we're bypassing the larger valve now and we're going to take all that lower demand through the smaller valve. Now that is a smaller dimension body valve, so its minimum flow rate is a lot lower. Now what we need to remember is that this valve must be set 50 kPa higher than the valve above or the larger valve. And that means there's less resistance on the seat, so we're going to ensure that all that low flow goes through the smaller valve and it leaves the bigger valve closed. As the demand on the system starts to increase, the larger valve will take over and become the high demand PRV again. And that's what we talk about when we talk about high and low demand or piping a, a PRV in parallel. Well, thank you everybody for watching. I hope you found that interesting. So what we spoke about there is, is the bypass BRV dealing with low flow situations. But again, if you want any information on any of our products, please just head over to our website, www.altechnic.co.uk, where you can find plenty of data sheets, IOMs, and some helpful guides on how you install PRVs. Thank you for watching.